you know, just give it some reps. I don't, not at the 3,000, just like 1,200, 2,000. You hear that sound? That's the sound of about eight months of hard work going up in smoke. It certainly sounds bad, but I have no idea what's going on with this car. So I'm gonna have to dedicate this video to figuring out what's wrong with my beloved Olaf, my 2007 Audi A4 that launched my channel. Let's fix it, I hope. All right, we are back with Olaf. Here we are a year and a half, maybe two years after I rebuilt this engine. And like I said earlier, uh, my son decided to see how far he could push this car on a you know, 15 year old oil pump. And I think he did some serious damage. So like I said earlier, I wasn't gonna do anything until I got the oil analysis back and it takes three weeks. So it's three weeks, I got the analysis and I'm gonna put it up here on the screen and you can see what we're looking at. There's two things that stand out, and those are the only two things that you really need to pay attention to, is the aluminum content and the copper content in that report. And as you can see, both are above suggested levels or recommended levels in the oil, especially the aluminum. So for those of you guys who know the 2.0 engine, leave a comment down below and tell me what you think, because we're gonna pull the engine. We have to pull the engine regardless, right? I wanna drop the oil pan and take a look at uh, the bottom end. I mean, because clearly if there's copper in there, then it's probably a spun bearing or something broke loose. I don't know. But we, we can't do any of that investigation with the car, with the engine in the car, because of the way it's put in there. There's a subframe that goes underneath that is in the way, it interferes. And I'm gonna pull the transmission out as well. I'm gonna try not to, but I think it's easier if I just pull the whole powertrain out and put it out here, disconnect it, put the engine on the stand, and then we can get to the oil pump. So if you don't, if you recall, or if you haven't seen the original Project Olaf video series, be sure to check that out. This car had oil starvation issues, was the original reason, and I resolved that. It had a clogged oil pickup. So it has the new oil pickup in it, so that's probably not what the cause is. But during the engine takeout, there's a whole lot of stuff that we gotta do here on the front carrier to make the engine accessible to us. So we're gonna have to take the front bumper off, bumper liner, bumper brace, the radiator, headlights, the whole thing's gonna come off. That'll give us access to the front of the engine and then we can start disconnecting the coolant lines, uh, any other exhaust piping, anything like that we're gonna take care of. So with that, let's go ahead and get this started. Here we go, Project Olaf, part two, let's fix it. This here is the oil filter that I pulled out of Olaf and you should be able to just see without having to do much to demonstrate what I see. But all of those little white specks, it's not white, it's glitter. And you'll see that it's all in the filter. Look at that. So, I may be wasting my time with this car.
this. Yeah. So push it in. That's backwards now. Swing down. No, don't let go. <laughs> Just let it swing down. There you go. And that, remember, I told you yesterday, that's the pain in the butt. That's, just that's gonna, gonna be in our there. way the whole time. All right, this is where we're at now. The front of the engine's exposed. We're just about there. We've got a few more things to take off, like the charge pipe here that goes into the throttle body. Gonna take that off, we're gonna take the belt off, and, and then we start disconnect, disconnecting the electrical as well as the vacuum system, and that's it. And we loosen it up, pull it out. I'm gonna try to pull it out without the transmission, but I may just pull it out so that it doesn't kill me trying to loosen it up. Okay, let's keep going. What I'm trying to do here is to get the arm of the crane or cherry picker to its full extended length because I can't get the engine to reach the engine stand which is its final destination. So I tried to do it with the, my lucky blue lift there which has been great for the Porsche but it just doesn't fit on the bottom of the oil sump because of the way it's designed to go over the subframe. So at this point, it's on the ground. I knew I was gonna have to extend it really quickly. I don't like to leave anything on the ground too long as I'm not sure if it's leaning on a pipe or anything fragile that it's not supposed to be sitting on. So once that was done, the rest was a piece of cake. Now, do that. And we can get this out of the way. All right, what'd you break? Everything. No. 
It's still attached? So, I got all the things off. And I didn't know a bolt here and then a bolt over there. And that's keeping it on. What's keeping it? On the alternator. Oh, yeah, you take that off. And then one in here. And then it should just come right off. Yep, that's the grounding point. Okay. Okay, let's get this oil pan off and see what we're dealing with. Okay. Keep going. Let's try it again. Okay. Okay. All right, so when you pop this lid, this cover off, there are pry points that they provide for you. So don't go just pulling on it. There's a pry point right here. And then there's a pry point on the other side. You just want to work it around until it pops off. So you're just going to put some pressure on it and just keep pressuring it all the way around. Moment of truth. Look at all that metal. All that gray. Okay. I mean, it doesn't look that bad. Okay. This, that's the problem. It's actually a good thing. Okay. You got a video of that? Mm-hmm. That's it. So I'm going to get the sprocket off here so I can loosen the chain. And then we can get the oil pump out. There you go. See? The chain rubs on these. You can see the little score marks on them from the chain. But, I mean, if you look at the sprocket, the sprocket looks good. The problem is right here. Look at that. See? That controls this sprocket here, and it's just, come back around, Gabe, on this side. Look at the diameter of this hole. Can you get in real close? Let it focus. There you go. There yeah. you look go. at the, the, the diameter of this hole, and then, look at this and then look at that one. So this counterbalance broke free, and I think we can delete the counterbalance and save the engine. We have a chance. Um, yes. Slippery I need right an here. extension for that one. Okay. 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 Now pull all the bolts out. And they're all different sizes. You're going to be like, how the hell am I supposed to remember? I'll remember. I have it documented somewhere. <laughs> one. Woohoo. That's it right there. This is the rattle with the freaking thing. You see these counterweights here? Mm -hmm. See these rats? See these? There's a way of cutting these out and running this without these. And this one's, gosh. Found out that these are also shaking a little bit. These, where are they? Connecting yeah. rods. Just a little bit. They almost feel like they're loose. I'm just kind of <clears throat> making sure nothing came loose. <clears throat> mm, I didn't even see that. Yeah, it's called a baffle plate. I'm not sure of the purpose. This part here should look familiar. Does it look... Looks like one of those down there, that crankshaft. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that from the old one? That's from the Mercedes. Mercedes. But these are what they call torque to yield. So you torque it, that click, click. And then when you get to that point, then you torque it a degree, like 90 degrees, 180 degrees. So, okay. And if you look down here, Gabe, I don't know if you can get that in the light, but there's some sparkly in that oil down in there. If you can see it. Here. Right there. Yeah, where well, you're looking. Right down there. See yeah, that? I see it. Yeah. It's little swirls. Uh-huh. 
But I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm very confident in that it being the oil pump, clearly. That's the smoking gun right there, man. Okay. Yeah. So before I close out this video, I was recently contacted by a vendor who sells a product called GT Shine, which is a ceramic spray. And I don't know if you guys have noticed out there, but there's been quite a few vendors that have gone to a ceramic spray detailing or finishing product for paint. I think the whole point of this spray is a booster to an existing ceramic coat, but some of these vendors actually claim that you can use this instead of doing a full ceramic coat. So what I want to do here briefly is demonstrate the one that I got from this company called GT Shine. They were nice enough to send me over a bottle as well as some really cool looking uh, polishing mats and drying towels. And uh, so I want to show you that, but I also want to compare it to what's readily available on the market today. And I am personally a Griot's customer, I've been a Griot's customer for a long time. If you're not familiar with Griot's Garage, they're sold all over the place now. When I first bought their products, they were sold strictly online, and now they're sold in O'Reilly's and places like that. So I wanna do a side-by-side -side comparison, and what better subject than Olaf, my Audi, right? It's sitting here minus an engine. I got plenty of panels here that I can work on. So what I wanna do is I wanna clean this surface, clay prep it, and then split it in half and try the retail griots along with the GT Shine and see if there's any type of difference, right? So let's do it. All right, the griots garage says to spray and wipe. Don't let it dry. The GT Shine is a very similar application. All right, so let's go ahead and just start this. I'm gonna cover it to keep it protected. And then it wants you to spread it sort of like the way you do with a typical ceramic coating. And I'm gonna let that sit. There's nothing streaking. I'm gonna come back and buff it off completely after I do GT Shine. Keep that separated. Nice liberal coats. And the same thing, buff it. This one says to buff it out. So that's what we'll do. Okay, so it's been about an hour and I've let them both set up. They were in a nice, cool environment. I have air conditioning in the garage, thank goodness. So they're ready to go and ready to be tested. So there's a few things that I wanna discuss with you about each one. So first of all, these are what I call maintenance tools for maintaining the condition of your paint in between major cleanings or detailings, right? This is not to replace a normal ceramic coating and here's the reason why. The chemical inside of a ceramic coat spray is a silicone dioxide. The ceramic coat that you apply during detailing has about 80% of silicon dioxide in it. Whereas something like GT Shine has about 15% and they claim to have the highest percentage for a detail spray. Griot's Garage does not advertise the amount of silicon dioxide so I can't give you a number on that, but GT Shine says it's 15%. The main underlying property that's so valuable is that it protects your paint from the weather. The weather can be anything from dust to water, right? So what I wanna show you here is the hydrophobic properties of each product. Do I expect to see a difference, significant difference between the two? No, but what I wanna show you is that you can't go wrong by using either one of them. However, you can go right if you click on the GT Shine affiliate link in the description below to help support the channel, right? Griot's Garage is a giant conglomerate company. GT Shine is a startup that started in 2019. I think their product is good. I think the fact that they advertise how much silicon dioxide is in their ceramic coat leaves no mystery of what's inside that bottle and that's a big selling point for me. So with that, let's go ahead and test this out and see what the difference is. Yeah, so on the right hand side here you see is the Griot's Garage and it feels real nice. Doesn't it feel nice, Yogi Mama? Nice and slick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right? Nice. So that ceramic coating again is gonna help with hydro with help with repelling water. Let me get you a better angle. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Look at that. Just comes nothing. 
right? I have a little bit of water on my hand, but overall, not bad. Let's take a look at GT Shine and see if it's any different. My finger is dry, completely dry. Whereas over here, it was a there was a little bit of a film of water. Anecdotal testing, I, I know, I understand. But it's a detail spray, right? We don't need to get into the weeds on scientific data here other than GT Shine has 15% silicone dioxide, Avalon King, which is the other brand that's real popular, and Griots do not disclose the amount of silicone spray. So it could be 1%, it could be 5%, I don't know. But like I said, GT Shine is what I'm gonna use on my cars in between detailing. And it works on vinyl wraps too, so that's really awesome because CK over here is a vinyl wrap, it's black. All right, thanks for watching this brief segment. Let's go back and wrap up the video. All right, I think I'm gonna end the video right there. I think it's a perfect spot. We found the smoking gun. You saw us zip apart the top a little bit just so that the fluid had somewhere to escape so that when we turned it over, the coolant just didn't puddle on the inside of the cylinder head, it could drain out. Now that it's upside down, we got a clear shot of the issue. The oil pump is the smoking gun. It's a very common issue. I'm gonna be able to delete, hopefully, those counterbalances and slap it back in there and save Olaf. It's time for some uh, gratuitous begging at this point. I love you guys. You guys give me some great feedback on my videos, but I really need you to step it up a little bit. Like the videos, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. I gotta feed this poor homeless kid, and I won't unless I get 100 likes on this video, and that's like double what I've ever gotten. Mm -hmm. So help us out, like and subscribe. Go to my Instagram at Yogi's Garage Texas, or TX, and with that, We'll see you next time on Yogi's Garage. That's easy. He's got the easy job. Oh